This project was a collaboration of two thesis students who resided in Genoa for four months in order to create a community center in the ruined premises for the former church of Santa Maria in Passione and its attached monastery. A substantial grant from the European Union that consists of a design and construction endowment, as well as a trust fund for the permanent upkeep and maintenance of the remodeled property, will allow the neighbors of the former church to have a community center. The center is to be run by the Espacio Libre Community Association, a democratically organized group of neighboring volunteers with minority participation from the University of Genoa School of Architecture. The ruins are cultural space, meeting place, and self-saving, where students, inhabitants, workers, and people operating in the craftsman's world, culture, and art can develop their own work and share it with the city. The idea here is to use ruins of an old church that was bombed in World War II for an innovative public center. It neighbors a piazza, a public garden, an architecture school, and a future archaeological park where it lacks accessibility and programmatic spaces for the involvement of its own community and roaming tourists. We were asked to work together and develop a strategy to integrate old and new facilities and tectonic expressions such as materiality and proportion. As individuals, we focused on the interior design and the connection details for different parts of the building. But before we jump ahead to our individual sections, let's take a look at the building's aesthetics. Our proposal is an interpretation of the Genovese fabric where form follows function. The community center consists of a variety of flexible spaces accommodating small and large groups throughout the year. Some of the main functional spaces are the gallery, auditorium, library, and a cafe space with one or more water features. The function in which the ruins laid out were projected horizontally to create a circulation in the space. The form follows function by projecting the ruins vertically to reinterpret the Genovese vicos. The goal of this project is to keep most of the historic ruins and add the intervention that respects them aesthetically. And that takes a big part with the functionality of our concept. So as you can see, the ruins that were taken off were minimum, keeping almost 85% of them intact and restoring them to create new interventions within them and above them. So based on how the building was, this is an animation showing you the new walls, as well as the ruins, and how they were projected not only vertically, but as well as horizontally. In the underground, we find a two-story height gallery in which shares a view from the main entrance onto the underground floor. The main entrance leads to an auditorium, a main stair of the building and another access point where it will connect the future archaeological park in the northeast and the public garden on the southwest for an easy access into the building. From the main stairs up, we find ourselves in the first floor with an administration office and a direct entrance from the School of Architecture straight to another double height space for the cafe. On this floor, students and visitors will also experience the linearity and vertical elements as shading areas, water features, and gardens in the outdoors, continuing the same experience of the indoors. Lastly, our second floor contains the rest of the cafe area and the new library with another easy access for the architecture school with seating areas. On this floor, we can experience some of the new reconstructed walls that are projected from old ruins and others to be intact, creating circulation on their own and to be respected. The roof is a composition of a variety of elevated individual roofs, some fully covered and others with pergolas to bring in some natural light into the spaces and to continue the same language of shading system into the landscape. To differentiate the old versus the new, 
we concluded to have a contrast of the roughness of the old ruins with a simple and smooth material plaster. Of course, there are parts where walls are not reconstructed, but glass is placed instead for view opportunities and natural light. Because of the different elevated roofs, slits are created as a result that give the opportunity for more natural light to penetrate the spaces. And on this elevation, we're showing different layers and frames that were projected from the ruins and the movement from piazza to piazza, along with the introduction of the landscape towards the architecture school. Then here you can see that Genova does not only consist of narrow, long, linear vicos, but also has different elevations in topography. The landscape of the new city center continues to extend its long, narrow linearity with the garden and water features, ascending to the School of Architecture. And these are some renderings showing the landscape pathways that follows the same function as the building, along with water features and structural frames that hold up the building. Here's a couple of pictures of our models showing how the center's main function is to serve the social and educational needs of their community, as well as preserving some of the extant fabric. Now we will focus on our individual sections where our goals were to create interior design and connection details for different parts of the building.